Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 43 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show Dave and I are talking about that the Australian Prudential Regulatory Authority or APRA has updated its guidance for the businesses it regulates. The regulator has released updated advice on the use of cloud services by banks and the financial services businesses. And make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips about cloud computing. Hi, Dave. It's great to have you on another Australia show again this week. Yeah, it's great to be here and great topic. Yeah, it truly is. It's, re it's really big news out there in Australia at the moment, that's for sure. So thought a great opening question for you would be, how do you see this actually affecting the Australian cloud computing market, Dave? Well, I think it'll just kind of eliminate an annoyance that uh, the Australian market has been dealing with for some time. So what are the regulators going to do with cloud computing? And this is an issue all over the world. And so in other words, in the European markets, we're dealing with how we're doing, you know, PII data, GSPR, um, the ability to kind of, um, you know, layer security on it, privacy. And I think the regulatory bodies have a tendency to kind of, um, knee jerked over regulation. They just kind of put too much uh, rigor between the, the cloud and the ability to use it effectively within environments. And I think we're, right now they're just kind of saying, we don't really know how to regulate it and we don't know what to regulate. And so we're just going to go ahead and open up the, the doors a bit and see what happens. And I think that's the right thing to do. And I think the market's going to explode around this. So in other words, the Australian market's already thriving around cloud computing and the strategic use of cloud computing and now that some of the regulators aren't paying as much attention to you know what's going to go on they're they're seeing the risk being removed and if the cost of risk is going to be removed they're going to go ahead and apply that uh, saved money um, to um, uh, implementing more cloud and I think the Australian uh, banks are just going to you know start using it by leaps and bounds just another barrier that's being lifted I'm sure they're not necessarily popping champagne corks, but you know it's probably uh, uh, it probably takes a bit of the worry that they had you know off the table, which is a good thing because the government should you know help people be be uh, successful, not necessarily limit their success. And I think that's exactly what they're doing here. Yeah, they really are. And I think that the, the new papers basically acknowledging the fact that security and safety has advanced so much so in, I think, the original three years of when they first uh, had their, you know, um, risk assessment over cloud in the financial services. So it's great to see that it's it's come, or cloud and security is at least given enough to APRA to say, well, you know, here are our new guidelines. This is what we think. And I think it's, uh, you're right, the, the Europe's, you know, having to change and regulation is really, it can stifle organisations can't it so I think it's at least heading in the right direction don't you think yeah it is and it's not only the regulations itself but kind of the fear uncertainty and doubt that kind of comes up so many instances companies make a decision based on what they think the regulators are going to do and they look at the trends and so they see additional regulations come down the pike they think that more are going to come down the pike and therefore they place bets in other other places other than cloud where if we're seeing a relaxing of regulations, which we're seeing here, then ultimately they're going to start investing in the cloud. And the reality is there's no um, good reason why you wouldn't put information in the cloud. People say it's security issues and privacy issues and things like that. That's just not the case. If you put the time and effort and the technology into securing your data in the cloud, it's going to be far more secure than it is on premise. And all you have to do is kind of look at the big hacks. You know that happened in the United States. There's a cloud nowhere, you know, nowhere ever near those things, and and uh, and so we're seeing kind of this paranoia, which I think is uh, you know unfounded, you know, kind of falling by the wayside. And I think governments reacted to that, so they realize that the security the security uh, mechanisms are there, the compliance mechanisms are there. There's there's probably more R and D dollars in security and governance that's spent on cloud than it is on the on-premise system. So there's no reason why you need to regulate the use of this kind of this service. And and I, I think that it's, you know, something that's going to continue going forward. And hopefully, you know, we don't necessarily remove all regulations. We have to have some control of some things, we, you know, privacy of our information, things like that. But we're kind of an economy that's over overregulated right now, holistically in the, in the global economy in terms of IT. And so we have to relax some of the stuff. And I think this is going to be the start of a trend, healthy trend. 
Yeah, there's certainly a healthy trend, especially over in Australia, because it, it comes very close to the point where the Australian government has moved heavily into cloud as well, you know, utilising um, and building relationships with IBM for like, I think, a, a billion Australian dollars, which is, you know, fabulous, obviously. But yeah, I think you've, you, we've, gone, we've gone down the route of heavily invo being involved in blockchain as well from a, a parliamentary point of view, uh, from a movement group, but also from a point of view of actually deploying and using blockchain uh, within the, the, the stock exchange, as it were. So moving out away from the, the old chess program format so yeah I mean it's it's really quite something isn't it that you know it's kind of APRA's now sort of come back up to speed they've had three years to kind of think about it assess everything I think it's a certainly a positive way forward don't you think yeah I do and we saw the same thing in the United States with the HIPAA regulations I and mean, HIPAA was very anti-cloud there and they were people interpreting the regulations as you know never allowing PII information in the cloud now that's not the case um, we put PII information in the cloud all the time and cloud computing uh, so cloud computing providers have HIPAA-based systems you're able to lom onto. Well, the same thing with the financial world, the same thing with retail, the same thing with healthcare, the same thing with the insurance business. And you know, we're we're just going to start seeing you know kind of the you know things loosening up, not in terms of us doing dumb things where things are unsecure and ungoverned, but our ability to, in essence, leverage information. Uh, out of the cloud that typically was, you know, not not uh, not to, not the trend, you know, 10 years ago. And it's a step in the right direction. We just have to watch the fact that um, we have to be self-regulating into ourselves. I think if you're going to see regulation show up, it's going to be around some kind of negative event. You know, a bank is hacked, information leaks, things like that. The, you know, it's put in the cloud and therefore the cloud gets blamed, but you find out that, you know, nothing people did in terms of um, you know securing that information and then even though one bank is going to be or one um, you know entity is going to be the culprit the regulators are going to show up and start throwing regulation around that and we saw that with the you know the financial collapse in 2008 regulation showed up a lot around that we saw that around additional hack security issues things like that so as long as we're able to regulate ourselves and don't do do things that are stupid it's going to be a very healthy uh, very proactive 10 years, but you know the, the folks that are in essence going to make mistakes uh, Everybody's going to pay for that. So if you're listening out there, you know, please don't be the person who makes a mistake Yeah, exactly right at least at least fail in, a, in an environment that's not going to impact thousands of customers personal data That would be uh, our advice to you <laughs> um, David, it leads us on nicely to your uh, top three cloud computing tips, which would be uh, pretty awesome. Yeah, you know, uh, going to this topic, you know, watch out for pending regulations. I mean, um, we just talked about the paranoia that regulations are going to tighten up going forward, and therefore people kind of react to the paranoia. But I think you should be pro, uh, productively paranoid and kind of looking at what the regulations are, are apt to be. And so, if you're moving information in the financial world, you could be dealing with, you know. 20 different markets and different countries that you're in. Each of them has regulations in terms of how they're dealing with financial data. If they don't, they will soon. So look out for those and make sure you're anticipating those and, and you're planning for the enabling technology. You're being proactive and not reactive. Next would be leverage cloud governance systems to comply. And so compliance can be a couple of things. Number one, we can do it programmatically in the applications. We can do it within the databases, stored procedures and triggers, database protections, things like that. But the reality is compliance is always going to be volatile and you should put volatility into a domain and that means put it into a governance system or a governance domain. So the ability to leverage uh, governance systems, API management, resource management, things like that, cloud management platforms to in essence do your governance for you means that you're able to do compliance changes in a configuration layer. You're not going through the programs and editing things. and the redeploying applications, which turns out to be a big costly mess. And then finally, never underestimate the power of change, um, you know, going forward. And so the reality is that things are going to change in the market and you're going to have to change those changes. And so your ability to, in essence, anticipate your anticipate, anticipate change and enhance your ability to change agility, um, you know, which is related to cloud computing is something that's going to be on the critical path going forward. So always kind of consider the fact that we need to change, we need to govern the systems, and we need to figure out what regulations are coming down the path. Great top tips there, Dave. Thanks very much. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> and thanks for being part of the Australia Show again this week. Yeah, glad to, glad to be back. <laughs>
Excellent, and thanks for watching everyone. Really hope you enjoyed watching this week's show. You can get David on Twitter, which is at David Lintigan. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, you name it, we're kind of there. Um, and yeah, look, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the future shows. Click that notification bell as well. I mention that every week now because it's so important. Uh, so yeah, make sure you stay tuned for next week. So have a good one.